In this morning's Health Watch, teen breakups, they are a part of growing up, but they can also be violent. The National Council on Crime and Delinquency reports that one out of three adolescent girls is a victim of some type of abuse. Early show contributor and psychologist Dr. Jennifer Hartstein has a look at a new project to help teenagers end relationships in a more healthy and safe way. Good to see you, Doc. Good morning. It's called Start Strong, an unprecedented $18 million initiative sponsored by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. The goal, to teach teens how to break up without breaking down. We would argue about silly things. The reason for the breakup was not respecting my wanting to be alone. I feel like she didn't really trust me. It has more of like a deeper impact on yourself, as in, it's my fault. You blame it on yourself. These teens have all been through tough breakups and experience no one ever prepared them for. Who's talking to you about how to handle a breakup? It's just, there's no one, like my parents didn't really tell me, oh, this is how you break up with somebody. That's why they're here at the Teen Breakup Summit, part of a nationwide effort to fight teen violence. What we tell teens is that if you're someone who's committed to being in a healthy relationship, you also need to be committed to having healthy breakups. Breaking up is serious business. 25% of adolescents report verbal, physical, emotional, or sexual abuse from a dating partner each year. And 10% say they've been physically hurt by a boyfriend or girlfriend. How many of you have been involved in a challenging breakup? One big problem, these veterans of the dating scene say the main lessons they get are from the media. I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! Especially from reality television where MTV hits like Jersey Shore and Amber, Teen Mom please. provide millions of teens with their only breakup role models. Amber? I believe a lot of the time it's the media that sort of shows people how to handle different types of relationships. Technology has also transformed the breakup. One recent study found 30% of teens have been dumped via text. How many of you have been broken up with or broken up with somebody on text message? Everybody. And a status change on Facebook can make breaking up into a spectator sport. It's now out there for the world to see, and that's really dangerous for teens. Everyone comments, and it brings drama. It's bringing public into a private relationship, which is not good for anyone involved. Jamie Ragusa has seen firsthand what happens when a breakup goes out of control. She was uh, so friendly. She was great. A former schoolmate of hers was stabbed to death a month after she broke up with her boyfriend. He's been charged with murder. When something like that happens, it's like you're losing a part of your family. You're losing someone so close to you. It is very important to talk to someone. With what they've learned here, these teens hope to spread the message that breakups can be better. There's a time where you know the other person can be extremely hurt, and you just have to be considerate of those feelings as much as you can. Be. These numbers are staggering. One out of three girls a victim of some sort of abuse. Yes. Adolescent girls, I mean, kids at this age, come on, where, I mean, where are they learning? Is it just reality television? Is that where they're getting their tips from? Well, it's a combination of a lot of things. And talking to these teens, it's reality television, and they're not going to the adults in their life to get any other information. So their parents aren't giving them information. Other trusted adults aren't talking to them. So they're looking at what they have access to, and most of the time that's the reality television. And the way people are breaking up with one another. I mean, we've come a long way since Sly Stallone broke up with someone via FedEx. Now they're doing it via text, and <laughs> exactly. you said from a face-to-face -face standpoint, it doesn't even happen with these kids. It doesn't happen with these kids. We asked them, you know, how many of them have broken up via text. All of them said yes. Two said they've broken up face-to-face. -face. And the truth is, that's still the best way to do it. And it's not just teenagers. Adults also are breaking up via text, via email, not getting on the phone, not having direct communication. We know that that's really the most effective and best way to have a conversation about what it is face to face because you get the nonverbal yeah. cues and you can really understand how people are feeling. I mean, doing it over the phone is bad, and they're not even doing that for the most right. part. So, what advice would we have for kids? Uh, a, first and foremost, <laughs> do not take your cues from reality television. Exactly. Uh, is it go to your parents? Is it what? What is it? Well, it's a combination of two things. We want them to go to trusted adults, but they need to know that the trusted adults aren't going to come back at them and punish them for something they might have done. So, for adults in these kids' lives, they need to be open, uh, start a dialogue early. They need to figure out and the, you know, how to talk to their teens about this stuff. The teens need to think about, who can I go to if it's not my mom and dad? Who's someone older than my friend who's also 15 or 16, getting the same information? That can give me different information and help me figure out something different. It's bothersome, though. It's really scary, and the fact is that it's happening more and more and more. These kids aren't learning how to have any healthy relationship. The great thing about Start Strong is they're teaching kids how to have healthy relationships in middle school. That's where it needs to start. Yeah. All right, Dr. Jennifer Hartstein, thanks. Good to see you this thanks. morning. Thanks, Chris.